release the park brake and I am attempting to lift the bucket using my right arm. So we are able to drive the machine forward and backwards. So that tells us that our drive motors are actually getting oil flow from our pump. So that's a good thing. But then when we try and tilt back, we cannot tilt this bucket back. So we'll rev all the way up and see if we can get any more flow when we get to high RPM. Okay, so now it shows that we get flow, limited flow, when we go to full RPM. And, but we do not get any lift. There is no lift and there is very slow, there's no pressure building to be able to tilt the bucket and there is very little flow for us to be able to tilt this bucket back. We cannot lift the bucket and I cannot lift the arms. The fact that they are responding to the controls tells us that it's not in the joystick or in the signal, but that it is somewhere in the flow coming from the pump. So let's look into that more. All right, so if we are gonna get access to the pump, we actually need to lift up the cap. So on this model, this is a 257D, but really common. You're gonna see that in the front corners, we're gonna have a 15 16 or 24 mil head on a bolt here and a nut underneath. This nut has been removed so we can lift up the cap. So you're gonna have that on one side and then we're also gonna have it on the other side of the cap. Now, these sometimes are also accessible from the inside of the cap. So if we open up the door, they are often in these inside left and inside right corners, but you can see that the heater's all molded in here, and so there is no access to that hardware. So we do, on this model, we do have to gain access to those front cab bolts right here. Another thing for us to take a look at is this red safety arm right here. And so as we lift up the cab, we wanna lift up until this bolt comes up into this keeper. At that point, the cab will be held up mechanically because we never trust a hydraulic strut to hold up a cab. And you don't put wood blocks to hold the cab either. We have to rely on the safety link. If these are missing, we should communicate to the customer that they need to be replaced. So push up on the top of the cab, the cab should start to lift. They are hydraulic assisted. So if you notice the cab is incredibly heavy, then the gas struts that help the cab go up are failed. And we wanna push up. And we can see right here that now we are in the locks on the lock arm. And now this cab is gonna be held up mechanically. And now we can crawl underneath that cab, look at the pump group and we'll be safe. All right, so now that we are, the cab's up in the air and it's on its locks, we're gonna be okay putting our head underneath this cab. If we didn't have it on the locks, we should never put ourselves in this pinch point. So because we've mechanically locked out the issue here by holding the cab up in the air, we're okay. And so what we wanna do is take a look at what's underneath the cab. And we can see this large group right here, and these are actually pumps. We have both a hydrostatic pump circuit, that is gonna be what we typically call it anyway, which is the hydrostatic pump group, and that's gonna be the pump set that run the drive motors. These big yellow ones back here are the hydraulic, or the hydrostatic drive pumps. And so there'll be a front pump and a rear pump, or the left pump and the right pump. And what we mean by that is there's a pump group right here, and that's the front, it's towards the front of the vehicle, and then there's a back pump, and they're actually the same thing. They're the same pump. They're gonna be controlled by the operator through the control scheme, whether it's pilot hydraulic, electro hydraulic, or mechanical. And that outlet oil from this pump group is gonna go down through these large lines through this cavity right here, and they're gonna to go to the drive motors. So that would be the left motor or the left pump. The other pump group is gonna come off, and that's that rear one. The rear one's coming back and it's going through with the hydraulic lines to this right side and that's gonna be our right pump. So in this machine's case, following the lines, we can see that the front pump, the one closest to the front of the vehicle, is actually the left pump or driving the left motor 
and the rear pump is actually driving the right motor. And so that's really important because if we run into an issue that one side is driving faster than the other, that is a flow problem. And that flow problem would be coming from either a pump setting or a pump war condition. And then we would want to make sure we're putting our pressure gauges in our flow meter on the right pump group of the hydrostatic pump so we can be testing the correct motor. So that's really important we're familiar with that that is a dual pump set. And on the top of the pump group, there's a bunch of black caps with Parker Quick Connects on there. And so that is so that we can actually plug in and we could test the charge pressure and we could test the hydrostatic loop pressure in both the forward pump and the rear pump. Otherwise the left and the right pump. All right, so then in front of those pumps on this flange right here, we see that we have another black component and that is going to be another pump group. Now, when we try and figure out what this pump is, there's a couple ways forward. One, you can just know what they are. Two, you can look up the part numbers on them. So this one is a 3738426. So we would be able to just put this in FIS, type that in with our prefix and serial number of our machine might even be able to do it just with the model number and it would take us to the parts diagram and any specifications related to this pump. But what we see from this pump right here is we see a big black line that's going to come into this pump group and that is our supply line. It is a low pressure line coming from our hydraulic tank right here and so our hydraulic tank is going to have a cap on a door but this is filled up with a hydraulic level. Now that oil is going to be available to the inlet of this pump. The outlet of the pump is going to be on this side and we can see we go from having a band type worm clamp right here to a o-ring face high pressure line here and that just makes sense. Our inlet to our pump is going to be low pressure, our outlet of our pump is going to be high pressure and so we're going to have a high pressure line on the outlet side. From the outlet of that line we see it goes up into our directional control valve right there and that's where we're going to actually see our oil from our implement be directed to our boom, our lift and lower, our tilt of our bucket, and our auxiliary quick couplers on the front of the machine. So if you wanted to run a snow sweeper or an auger, you would hook up to the auxiliary connections on the front of the machine, and that would be running off this pump. Another thing we have to take a look at is right here. So this one actually has, if we look at it, it seems like one part number, but it's actually one group number in the parts diagram and right here this is one pump assembly and this is another pump assembly there's a split right here where they are bolted together this one's bolted to here this one's bolted to the flange of the pump and so we have one two three four pump groups this outlet line so they are going to share a common supply this line is going to supply both the implement and this pump right here and this pump line coming off is being sent up over to this valve right here, which is gonna be our control. And we are also sending a supply down here. All right, so when we have a customer complaint of slow operation, anytime we're talking about speed and hydraulics, we're really talking about flow. And so the easiest way for us to understand what's happening in the skid steer, being the fact that it doesn't seem like it has enough flow to lift anything like it it feels like it's not building pressure and so we have to decide is it a pressure problem or a flow problem if we are having flow we'll build pressure unless we are leaking just as much as the pump is producing and so one of the most helpful tools we can use for this especially on a skid steer that has quick couplers is this tool right here and it's called a flow meter this flow meter has a pressure gauge on it. It has the flow meter itself, so it's actually gonna have the volume of oil per minute that's moving out of the pump. And then it's gonna have a temp gauge because we wanna see, is the oil getting really hot? What's common to see in hydraulics, although we're supposed to run high viscosity index oil, is that when it gets hot, the leakage increases. And so we wanna pay attention to the temperature of the oil just to make sure it's not just getting so hot that it's really thin. And maybe the customer has put in a mixed grade oil instead of hydraulic oil and now we're suffering from excess leakage because of the incorrect oil. 
One thing to note in this flow meter is there is a directional arrow. So it says it comes in from what you would see in this camera here on the right side, goes out on the left side. And so what we're gonna do with this one, we have some JIC ends on the end of the hose here. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna use these quick coupler adapters here, drip some oil, and we're gonna turn these in and this is gonna allow us to hook up to the aux couplers. We'll use a wrench and tighten those up properly. But this is gonna allow us to hook up to the aux couplers of the skid steer. And now what we can do, after we've looked at that schematic, we can see that that pump that runs the implement is also running our auxiliary circuits. And so we have the ability then, if we test the aux flow, to actually see how much flow is coming out of the pump. And then what we can also do, if we notice on this flow meter, is we have this little handle right here. This is actually a restriction. So we can actually drop this down and we can increase the pressure that we would see on the system. And as we increase the pressure on the system, if we see leakage drop off, that's just an indication of a war pump. So what we should be able to do is do flow at a low restriction this backed all the way off. And then we should also be able to do the flow at a high restriction. This turned almost in until we get to relief pressure. And we compare the two flows, the flow at the no pressure and the flow at the high pressure. And we use it sort of like a test. Ideally, we would have the flow we had at the low side. So that would be the bottom number. And then we have the flow at the high pressure. That would be what we actually got under test. And we divide them like a math or uh, school quiz. And we actually calculate the efficiency using no pressure and high pressure settings. So low pressure, high pressure on the pressure gauge, seeing low flow on the, on the flow meter. And what that's gonna give us then is an efficiency or a pump efficiency. And what we'd call that is a relative pump efficiency, but if it's lower than 80%, so let's say we had 100 liters per minute at no load, and then with load we had 70 liters per minute. That would be a 70% efficient pump. That means that when we're fully loaded and we have high pressure, our pump is leaking a lot, and that would be a reason for us to replace that pump. All right, so this is what we're gonna use. This is the flow meter we have in the shop. we are put the quick couplers on, we're gonna hook it up to the front of that skid steer, and we're gonna be able to test to see how that pump is performing. So now we've got uh, the machine running. We're hooked up to the quick couplers, and now what we've done is revved to full throttle, and we're seeing all of the flow move through here, and we see that we've got a little over 30 liters. We have no pressure being built, and now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a load. And we're going to see that we don't even get to 500 PSI before our pressure drops off, which means this pump is running at like 10% efficiency, and this would be enough for us to fail this pump. So when we let off the load, what we can see is that the pump flow comes back. We're getting up to 30. And as soon as we raise any pressure, even when we get to 200 PSI, we're already down to 20, so that's a third of our flow gone. Now we're down to 10 by the time we get to 300, and now we're down to nothing by the time we hit 500. So that's enough for us to condemn this pump.